Hi everyone. So this time we've got <clears throat> another, you know, this whole week's set of videos is going to be more practice on M1 because this is devoted to uh, the topic on your plano is dynamics with friction. But we've already been working with friction, so we're kind of ahead of the curve. Um, and the week's going to be, you know, you're going to have lots and lots of these types of problems. So it's just going to continuously consolidate every time. Um, again, you can rush ahead if you want, if you feel really confident with this stuff, and then always check back though, check back that the answers are right, um, and that we agree, okay? And if we don't agree, then tell me in class. Okay, so, <clears throat> three different situations, there's going to be two videos, three different situations each, so that's six different situations. So, two blocks A and B of masses 20 kg and 30 kg, respectively, are inside a cage, of mass 10 kilos. This is very similar to the scale pan, except it's not a light scale pan situation. So I'm going to draw a scale pan, but remember this isn't a light one. This one in itself has a weight of 10 g. Okay, and inside are two blocks A and B, um, where A is on top of B. So like before, this is B, and this is A. And we know that this is 20 kilograms, and this one is 30 kilograms. Okay, uh, the box are lowered to the ground using a rope. So I've got a rope on there, there's tension. Uh, and the rope is modeled with light and acceptable string, moving down vertically with acceleration 0.8. Okay, so the calculator's out. Uh, I haven't drawn all the forces on here yet, but because we don't know what we're dealing with. So we'll start with part A. So we're trying to find the tension in the rope. What does the tension have to bear? Well, look, we can just make this into one particle, can't we? Because the rope has to bear the entire brunt of the cage plus block A plus block B. So in total, that's 60 kilograms of a mass, so that's 60 G. It's all accelerating down with 0 0.8. So therefore, resolve down, 60 G is going down, subtract the tension, is our mass times acceleration. So therefore, tension is 60 G, subtract 60 times 0.8, moving that tension over, moving the number over, and therefore, tension is 60 times 9.8 minus 60 times 0.8. So 540 Newtons, 3SF, because we're using... G. Okay, that's part A. <clears throat> part B, the magnitude of the force that block A, block B exerts on block A. So, this is back to our table situation, isn't it? We have B acting as the table, right? And A is resting on the table, but it's not resting, it's not in equilibrium, it is accelerating downwards. So B has to bear the brunt <coughs> of the reaction uh, of the weight that A is instilling on it. So A is on here. We know that's got a weight of 20 G. We know it's still accelerating downwards. And therefore, <coughs> the reaction, if we resolve down, we have 20 G subtract R equals total mass, which is 20 times R A is 0.8. So therefore, R or RA or RB, depending on the way you're looking at it, because remember, equal and opposite reactions as per Newton's third law, uh, Newton's first law on that one, I think. <coughs> what is it, third? Um, R equals 180 there, then. Okay, so that's part B. And then part C says find the normal reaction between B and the floor of the cage. So again, the floor of the cage has to bear B, but also has to bear A as well, doesn't it? Because otherwise, it would give off this normal reaction. Uh, otherwise, B and A would both fall through the surface of the cage. So this is a weight of 50 G going down. It's still accelerating at 0.8 downwards, so we'll resolve down in the direction of acceleration. So 50g, subtract the r, is total mass 
times 0.8 and therefore r is 50g subtract 50 times 0.8 so 450 newtons to can you read that <clears throat> 450 newtons free sf cool so hopefully this is starting to flow quite easily for you now uh, let's move on to the next problem so this time we've got a van of mass 900 kilos towing a trailer of 500 kilos up a straight road inclined to the horizontal and angle alpha where tan alpha is 0.75 we talked about this before tan alpha is 3 by 4 draw a quick triangle to the side completely to the side opposite over adjacent opposite adjacent 5 we now know that cos alpha exactly is 4 by 5 and we know sine alpha is opposite over hypotenuse so 3 over 5 so that folks is to the side remember that's so we can keep all of our stuff exact so <clears throat> a van going up the slope so let's draw our slope then there's alpha a van of 900 so here's our van 900 g normal reaction of the van so we'll call that rv because that normal reaction is not going to be the same as that of the trailer so the trailer 500 g rt yeah uh, they're connected by a tow bar, uh, inextensible, uh, therefore we have tension, split the two systems up, and the engine of the van exerts a driving force of 12,000 newton, so there's 12,000, uh, and the van and the trailer experience resistances of 1,600 and 600 respectively. So. Let's start drawing this stuff on. Like I say, colors work well. So it's accelerating up the slope. I should immediately be writing out my weight components here. Remember, that's cos because it's next to the angle. So the sine one's going to be coming down. So 900g sine alpha. This one, 500g cos alpha. And down... 500g sine alpha we've also got the resistances so for the van the resistance it told us was uh, 1600 and for the trailer it was 600 so the diagrams looking a bit busy but hopefully you understand and remember diagram really should be half a page in size I'm a bit restricted by this slide okay so once we've done that now it's just easy the diagram leads the whole discussion so find the acceleration of the van we're looking at it as one system aren't we so what's the force going up 12,000 isn't it minus all the forces which are going parallel to the slope but downwards in direction so I've got my resistances 1600 and the 600 and I've got my weights which is our 500 G sine alpha but we know sine alpha is 3 by 5 we've also got our minus 900 G sine alpha but as we know sine alpha is 3 by 5 and this all equals the total mass in motion so 900 plus 500 1400 times our acceleration a so if we rearrange all that, we should get A equals, calculators out, folks. <coughs> uh, what do we get? So we get 12,000 minus 1,600 minus 600 minus 500 times 9.8 times 3 by 5 minus 900 times 9.8 times 3.25 divided by 1400 and we get 1.12 meters per second squared to free sf because we've used g cool part b says find the tension in the tow bar again we can't 
do anything unless we isolate one particle. What's the easiest particle to deal with, i.e. which one has less forces on it? Well, the trailer looks to me like it's got the least amount of forces on it. So I'm going to stick with the trailer. So I'm going to write at trailer, tell whoever it is what you're doing. I'm resolving up the slope. T is going up the slope. Or supposing it 600 and also 500 G sine alpha, but again, we know that's 3 by 5 now, not sine of 3 by 5, um, which so many people seem to do. Mass is 500, and then our acceleration, which we just found. So if we rearrange, we should get T equals 500 times 1.12 plus 500 times 9.8 times 3 divided by 5, plus 600, 4,100 newtons, 3SF, because we've used G. And that's that one. Got any left? Yeah, one left. Okay. So this time we've got a box of 1.5 kilograms. So let's immediately whack that weight on there. So 1.5 G. Uh, it's also got normal reaction then. Oops. What's that happened there? So normal reaction. Okay. <coughs> um, place an angle of 30. Coefficient of friction between the box is a third. Box is kept in equilibrium by a light and extensible string. Uh, string makes an angle, blah, blah, blah. Box is in limiting equilibrium, so that means we're at F max, doesn't it? So limiting equilibrium means F equals mu r, not F is less than or equal to mu r, because remember friction uh, can vary. It, it will go to the amount that's required until it's at its maximum, and then the thing starts accelerating or moving. Tension in the string is T. Okay, so it's about to move up the plane, which means friction must be against its movement, mustn't it? So friction must be a third R. We also have the weight component straight away. So 1.5 G cos 30, because it's next to the angle 30. And we've got the weight going down. So 1.5 G sine 30. And we've got our tension which needs to be split into parallel and perpendicular forces to the plane. This is going up the slope, isn't it? So I've got a horizontal, well, parallel to the plane, going across. It's next to the angle 20, so this must be T cos 20. It's also got an element going up, like that, if you prefer to draw it as triangles so you can make sense of it. You can see that's there, but, you know, really, uh, if we want to be good with our forces, we should have it coming out of the particle, so T sine 20 here. And now we can do this, can't we? Because it's on the point of moving up. Yeah, everything's all good. So I need to find T, so all we can do is start by perhaps resolving up the slope. So all the forces going up the slope, T cos 20, that's cool. Uh, what's Supposing it, so a third R, don't know what R is yet, and 1.5 G sine 30. It's in equilibrium, so this equals zero. So <clears throat> if we rearrange, we get T cos 20 is a third R plus 1.5 G sine 30. And therefore T is a third R plus 1.5 G sine 30 over cos 20. But I need to know what R is, so I've got to resolve perpendicular to slope. It's always the same. In all these examples, it's always the same. So <clears throat> we've got R going up plus T sine 20 going up. What's opposing it? 1.5 G cos 30. Anything else? Don't think so. Equals zero. Just quick count how many forces have been included. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Yep, all forces have been included. So I know I'm all good. Uh, and we just need an expression for R and T. Thing is, we've got a simultaneous equation here. It's not very nice. 
Mm. It's not very nice at all. So I think we'll remove the one we did here because we're going to need to rearrange. So let's make R the subject of this one. So we get 1.5G cos 30 minus T sine 20. And now this, now it's just algebra, folks. Now this can go into there. And we can start finishing this off. So we've got T cos 20 equals a third of our R. So that's 1.5G cos 30 minus a third T sine 20. So I've just times everything in there by a third. Plus 1.5G sine 30. And now <clears throat> 1.5G sine 30. And now we need to bring all the t's over to the same side. So t cos 20. And I think this is where most people have trouble, really, because manipulating algebra, you know, can be a bit difficult. And then you've got to put things in the calculator. There's always room for error there as well. But if you just kind of take your time, you'll be all right. And in my advice is to do these things more than once in your exam. So here we take out a factor of t, doing this slow, just showing every step, g sine 30, and then we can divide. So we've got a third, 1.5g cos 30 plus 1.5g sine 30, all over cos 20 plus a third sine 20 calculators then. I hope you're doing this with me. You should absolutely be practicing this uh, on your calculator. So this is all times okay third times 1.5 times 9.8 times cos 30 plus 1.5 times 9.8 times sine 30 all over cos 20 plus third sine 20 and we get 11.0 newtons to 3s f and that's that so make sure please that you are following this and you're able to put this in your calculator. Not necessarily an easy problem here, uh, but it's all about the algebra. Okay, one more video to go.